So today on the Drive Channel, everything that's gone wrong with this, my 2007 uh, Jaguar XK. So I bought the car in late 2019 uh, with 103,000 miles on it, and the car now has 133,000 miles on it. So I put about 30,000, give or take, miles on the car. Um, and there have been a few things that have gone wrong with the car. Fortunately, nothing major. Uh, but I'll go over them today just to give you an idea of what um, of what you expect to go wrong if you buy, particularly one with fairly high miles like this one. So the first thing that went on the car uh, was only about a week after I bought it. Um, the previous, it's not they weren't owners, but I didn't I didn't buy this from the previous owner. I bought this from a, a mom and pop wholesaler, car wholesaler uh, down in Florida, and they were. Uh, uh, they had almost no inventory, but the, the car had a check engine light, uh, which had something to do with the, the fuel system. So they replaced the fuel regulator in the car. And then about a week or so after I, I bought the car and was, I got it on the road and was commuting in it, it actually stranded me. The car just died on the road. Um, and it was a weird thing because you could actually wait a little bit, start the car and it would run a little bit and then die again. So that was actually the only thing I've, I've ever had fixed by the dealership because because it did strand me i just had it towed to the dealership and it cost me six hundred dollars uh maybe 660 somewhere in the six hundred dollar range to fix that which was pretty good considering that the dealership almost never charges anything less than a thousand dollars so 600 bucks for that and that was right away within the first week or so so then the, the next thing that went wrong uh with the car i started getting a check engine light for the um uh, I started getting a check engine light. I ran the codes, and it looked like the uh, the catalytic converters uh, were starting to go. And I still have that that code to this day. Now those are very expensive. Uh, so I've tried everything to to try and kind of mitigate that um, with varying degrees of success. I still have an occasional check engine light from the cats, um, but I, I you know I tried the uh, lacquer thinner in the car, which was recommended. It, the car ran totally fine on the lacquer thinner, by the way. It's it's definitely safe. Whether it worked or not, it's not quite. It didn't quite work. I don't think it it uh, it, it didn't completely fail, but it didn't really work. The uh, it's a little bit more intermittent. The uh, check engine light is now. So that so that was the other thing that went. There is a hose that that goes from uh, that goes from the radiator, and it splits off into two, and it and it goes down to right around where the uh, the oil filter is. And it's actually uh, this this car and a lot of uh, Jaguars have a um, a water to oil intercooler. So they basically run coolant through this little oil cooler, and um, it, that's the hose that actually goes to that to the oil cooler, even though it's filled with coolant. So uh, so that hose uh, went. It was 250 bucks for that, uh, and that almost stranded me because when it starts to leak it's a couple of drops and then one day it'll be a a gusher and then you'll barely make it home or not at all so that was a that was a 250 dollar uh hose but it's really like three hoses in one so that's why that was so expensive so that went on the car uh after that uh let's see the um this actually happened previous but the uh idler for one of the the, the serpentine for the serpentine belt uh, just failed one morning. I went to go to work, hit the hit the start button, and the uh, s the serpentine belt just got eaten by the by the car because one of the uh, idlers failed. And so that was probably at around 110,000 miles or so. Uh, so I had to replace not only that idler but the idler on the tensioner. I didn't replace the tensioner. The tensioners are pretty robust. They they seem to work really well. And of course I had to replace the the belt. So that was. I don't even know if that whole ordeal was even $200, but it was probably like 150 bucks or so. Uh, this car eats, um, it, it eats front brakes. I don't know why, but it warps the rotors all the time. It does need some, some front suspension work. I know that the, the shocks are very worn in the front and the shock absorbers are really hard to come by. But uh, when I first bought the car, the front shocks were, or the, uh, the brake rotors were warped. And so I replaced those. Uh, it was shocking how cheap they were. I think I paid $150 for pads and rotors for all four wheels, and I did the work myself. So that was pretty easy work, and it was pretty cheap. Uh, the headlights on this car are, because this car came from Florida, it came from the Miami area, uh, the, it probably sat out in, a, in the Florida sun for a while, and the, the headlights are faded pretty bad. I have tried everything 
I have polished them and then polished them again with with orbitals, with every type of polish known to man. Really, they, they, the lenses need to be replaced, but they don't sell the lenses, of course. You have to replace the, the whole lighting unit, which I think are like 900 bucks a piece if you could find new old stock. And that is a lot of money to pay for something that is really not technically broke. It still functions. It's just faded from the sun. So that's really frustrating. I haven't, I haven't done that work. Uh, I just try and keep it polished and make it look as good as I can, at least for now. Uh, now, in terms of like mechanical issues, there have been a few. Again, starting with uh, that right around 105, 110,000 miles. Uh, the water pump went on the car. It started to leak. So they're it, it, unbelievably cheap, but it's a pain in the, you know, just like anything, it's, it's a pain to replace them. Uh, it's a fair amount of work. Uh, so they go for maybe 30 bucks. Um, believe it or not, 30, 30, 35 dollars for a, for a water pump for this car. But like I said, it's, it's a pain and you have to buy some coolant to go along with that. So maybe it's like a $50 job if you do it yourself. The alternator went, I have a video on the alternator of me replacing the alternator. That was a lot more work than I expected because you have to remove the, uh, one of the, uh, engine mounts to get to it. And so that was a lot of work. Um, and not really cheap. I think, I think I paid maybe $200 for the, uh, for the, uh, alternator. Uh, what else went on the car? The alternator, the starter went, I have a starter video out there. Actually, I did, I did the starter video. I didn't do a, a video on the alternator. Uh, that was a bit of a pain as well. I also had to remove that same engine mount to do the starter. So, uh, by then at least I knew how to do it, but that was a, that was a pain. Uh, again, not a very expensive part. It was maybe, maybe 200 bucks or something like that. Um, but, uh, that went too. And then last but not least, it would appear just about a week ago, the air conditioning in this car packed up. And so I'm pretty sure it's the, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the, the, uh, the compressor. So at this stage, at 135, uh, 133,000 miles, everything that attaches to the engine, with the exception of the power steering pump, has gone on the car. And they've all gone, you know, after, after about 105, 110,000 miles is about when they start to go. So if you have a car like this, that will be, uh, that will be pretty much expected. Uh, this car has lived a pretty easy life. It's driven regularly, so it hasn't really uh, seen any kind of abuse, uh, but it is driven. Uh, the other thing uh, that I've mentioned in many videos is the the Bluetooth. Uh, the, the Bluetooth doesn't work on this car. I replaced uh, I replaced the battery with an Optima Deep Cycle battery in part because something is draining the battery on this car. I've never taken the time out to figure out what it is. I actually think it is the Bluetooth. I think it's the the Bluetooth that's not working is what's draining the battery. So um, I've tried replacing the unit. That didn't work. Uh, there's a there's a unit back where the battery is that uh, controls the, the, the phone. It's like the, the phone, mobile phone unit. That didn't work. So I'm kind of at a, a crossroads with that. I mean, it's just, it's kind of like, I'm at an impasse is, is the better word. It's, it's just, it's not gonna get fixed anytime soon. Uh, so the big thing right now uh, is the, the air conditioning compressor because with that, uh, it doesn't seem to be seized. It just doesn't seem to be going on. So it could be the clutch of the compressor. It could be a number of things. I did put my, uh, my gauge uh, manifold set on this thing. And, it, and according to, to what I was looking at, it was, had, there was plenty of pressure on the high end, nothing on the low end. And I think that's an indication, or vice versa, that's an indication that the, um, that the compressor is not compressing. So, and I don't hear it turning on. I don't hear it doing anything. So that's probably, um, so that's probably what that is. Uh, but anyway, that is, uh, in a nutshell, everything that has gone wrong with the car so far. Um, other things, the shock absorbers, like I mentioned, I have not replaced those. So, uh, those, uh, are really, really difficult to find because they're, they're called Damptronic. They're made by Bill Stein. And this car, when you put it into the sport mode, it actually stiffens the front shocks a little bit. So, uh, they're not a typical shock absorber. I could try and buy coilovers or something like that, but I really do, in this car, I'd like to keep it kind of stock. And I think that's really trick, that, you know, the fact that you could put it in sport mode 
and it stiffens up the shocks. I think it probably does in the back too. I just can't see the top of the, the shock absorbers. Uh, I would have to take the car apart just to look at them. But the rear shocks are doing fine. Like they're not, um, by the way, it doesn't throw any codes when your shocks are worn. It just simply just, it, it just uh, doesn't do anything. The, 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 uh, clearly it's very, very soft up, up front there. Uh, probably should also replace, I replaced the uppers, uh, the, the, uh, the uppers, uh, the upper a arm i should call it uh, and then it has lower it has two pieces for the lower so there's a, a lower uh, front and there's a back uh, a control arm uh, those probably could use replacing too because i mean if the shock absorbers are worn then probably the uh the suspension parts are also worn as well so that's that's probably the next thing other than that uh the car runs very well like it like the engine itself the actual engine itself is remarkable in terms of how strong it is you know i mean knock on wood and this is really wood uh, let's let's hope that it continues to remain strong but it doesn't it doesn't um uh it doesn't uh, consume a lot of oil uh it does have and i forgot to mention it does have a leaky timing chain cover so unfortunately uh, this car leaks a lot of oil, but I know what it is, and it's just the same amount of oil. It, it's it, it's not getting worse. It's obviously not getting any better, but that is big work. That's like a that's like a thirty five hundred dollar job, and that was quoted a long time ago. So it's probably more like four grand now, because it's just you have to take the whole front of nose of the car off if if you were to have somebody do it. And honestly, I would never do a job like that on this car. I, I just don't have the motivation to do something that involved, especially for a leak. So that's why it hasn't been done, because it's like, I don't want to pay someone else to do it, but I also don't want to do it myself. So that's, um, so that's another thing. Um, but that's essentially it. Like I said, the, the car, in terms of its, uh, its, the main, the engine itself, everything inside that, the engine block and the, and the, uh, the cylinder heads and everything is, um, is really strong. Uh, previous models in the XK8, the, the previous version of the 4 liter uh, version of this car, this has a 4.2, uh, used to have timing chain issues, but they did sort that out by the time they got to this car. So timing, timing chains uh, and uh, timing ten chain tensioners uh, are not an issue with this car. And so there it is. So hopefully this is the kind of content you get on this channel. Hopefully you like it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, I have more uh, videos coming along on the Broco Barchetta. I also want to do a, an introductory video to the early days of the X150, the Jaguar XK, the car that I'm sitting in right now, and a little bit of the design and sort of the history leading up to the launch of the car. So I don't know if anyone's ever done a video like that. So it may be something that uh, is kind of unique content. But anyway, uh, subscribe and uh, like and I'll uh, see you in the next video.